the most important steps you need to know when you want to do a gua sha routine. First of all, make sure to clean your gua sha tool before and after every use. Warm water and soap should be enough if you use it only on clean skin. If anything doesn't feel good on your face, if you feel discomfort or pain, please stop and always use your gua sha tool from the middle of the face to the sides following the lymphatic pathways. You should not use your gua sha tool in areas where you have acute acne or eczema or even an open wound. But you can still use it around these areas and it will help to heal your skin. You can use a face oil if you prefer it. You can also do it without, depending on your skin's needs. If you have dry skin or you have the feeling the tool cannot glide easily, please use an oil before. Let's start with our routine. We will start on one side of the face so you can see the difference when you have completed one half of your face. And in the end, don't forget to do the other side. Let's begin with our practice. Your facial tool or your gua sha tool has different sides and different shapes. So whatever feels good or feels best on your face is perfect. So let's just start the routine and I will explain while I'm doing it. So we always start on our chest. I will use the most flat side of this tool Simply, simply place it here, use your fingers to protect the skin. You never want to create extra wrinkles and with kind of no pressure or not a lot of pressure, we let the tool glide from the sternum to the sides, along the collarbone and also on top of the collarbone. We want to warm up this area because we have a lot of lymph nodes here. We want to prepare our lymphatic system for everything that is coming. Let's go on with our neck. We'll also use the long side and we start with some upward strokes. Again, protect your skin, lift your chin slightly and let the tool just glide no pressure at all we are just doing some nice and gentle upward strokes you can integrate the swan neck here which helps to stretch out the entire lower face and jawline and neck area don't forget the back of your neck too we have a lot of lymph nodes at the back of our neck and our entire face will definitely benefit from going over the entire neck. Then we will do some very gentle strokes downwards. Again, no pressure. The weight of your fingertips on the tool is enough to bring some lymphatic liquids down and to do something really good for your neck. If you don't have time to do an entire gua sha routine, just doing the neck will have amazing, um, how can I say that, results on your entire face. Okay, coming to the jawline, you have different options here. You can use this side of the tool to go over your jawline like this. Again, you don't have to use pressure, but because you are directly on the bone, you can use a little bit more pressure here, you can hear some scrunching or feel some little bumps. That's a sign that you are definitely in the right spot because this is dense tissue, fascia already calcinated. You definitely want to work in these areas. 
Then you can use one of these edges and just go under your chin, which feels so good. And you can also use the flat side of the tool from the starting from under your chin and do some small strokes just upwards, always to the ears. Maybe turn the tool around and bring everything again without pressure down to your collarbones. Coming to the chin, we use again just one edge working on our chin area. It's also a bone. We can use a little bit more pressure here and with reduced pressure on the top of our upper lip, the other hand is always protecting. Coming to the nasolabial fold area and the entire cheeks, we use the long side of the tool. Just place it again, protect the skin with your other hand and let the tool glide to the sides in front of your ears. Do some very, very um, gentle and slow strokes. Enjoy it, it feels so good. And again, you can turn the tool like this and bring everything down to the collarbones. Coming to the eye area, you don't want to use a lot of pressure here. Definitely not. This area is very delicate. Protect the skin and just place again one of these edges. You can also use one of these. It's a little bit smaller. I prefer this one. And you just let the tool again glide without any pressure to the outsides, to your temples. One more time, starting at the inner corner. All your fingers are there to protect the delicate skin to the temples. And one more time, like this, nice. And bring everything in front of your ear. We will go down after we have done the eyebrows. Again, with this one or with this one, you can go over the eyebrows or under the eyebrows, wherever you feel that your face or your eyebrows really need it, you will feel it. Just let your feelings guide you. It feels so good. You can also use this one to go over the entire eyebrow. Be careful not to use too much pressure again here. Coming to the 11 lines. Again, one edge working on these 11 lines. Oh, that feels so good. We store a lot of tension in our foreheads. Then we can go over the entire eyebrow. Use the fingers of the other hand to protect up to the hairline. You can do a little wiggle here. Feels absolutely amazing. And of course, you can go over the entire forehead. I love to use the shorter side because my forehead is not that big so I can just go here up to the temples. You can do it this way and give the eyebrow a little kick at the end. That feels amazing. And then again turn the tool around and bring everything down to the collarbones. And that's it. You are done with one side of the face and I can tell you it feels so good and lifted and fresh. So don't forget to do the other side.